Shocker. Uh, nobody surprised who knows me or listen to this podcast at all. Uh, <laughs> my number one is Sophie's Choice uh, from 1982, directed by Alan Pakula, starring Meryl Streep, Kevin Klein, Peter McNichol. Quick logline, Sophie is a survivor of Nazi concentration camps who has found a reason to live with Nathan, a sparkling, if unsteady, American Jew obsessed with the Holocaust. So this was a struggle for me because obviously I was going to have a Meryl movie on of here. Course. Yeah, <laughs> the, no the question. listeners would be disappointed if you didn't. Exactly. I think they would unsubscribe. So Exactly. I have to play to my crowds. There you uh, go. <laughs> <laughs> to my street heads. That's right, right. <laughs> But I actually didn't have this one originally, but the more I thought about it, like, obviously this is not a movie that, you know, I put on on a Thursday night or a Saturday night or any night, you know, this is like, it's, it's, it's a commitment Definitely. movie that you watch and you admire and you appreciate and, and that's sort of that. But, but I think the thing that I kept coming back to was what I said up top, which is, we've talked about all different styles of acting, but to me, the thing that I hold in, the highest regard in the craft of acting is transforming yourself into a totally different person. And, and it's not just about physical transformation, though mm -hmm. all those things are at present in full display here. Everything from the accent work to how she walks and the makeup and the voice, and you see her in different aspects of her life. Right. And all of that is happening, of course, but it's really more of the inside out performance where you can see this person thinking and feeling like somebody else and there's a, a meta quality with sophie as well because she's lived so many different lives that right right as she's telling stories of her past you know memories a weird thing you remember what you remember and you make up a lot of the the other bits right so you're getting this kind of haunting, unreliable narration of the things that she's done. But there's also at some deep level, maybe admittance to the things that she's done that she shouldn't have done, perhaps. Mm -hmm. um, and there are questionable choices there. And those live on because she's living with Nathan, who, spoiler alert, is revealed is kind of mentally unstable and such as the movie goes on and you don't really know that and you keep wondering why is she even with him and right and then you realize that yeah she's probably known that throughout this whole time i mean there's a famous line from the movie which is that you know i don't even know what the truth is all after all the lies i've told right right you see that in her eyes in her body and and all of it and that to me is what i was saying up top that magical mystical quality that this person has now crossed to a different plane in terms of what they're doing. So mm -hmm. in my mind, this is one of those, I don't know, Pantheon greatest performance recorded on screen forever. Mm -hmm. um, and I have watched this movie a couple of times um, and I'll get to it in a second of what is revealed, uh, not just about her, but the ensemble of the movie as well. Had you watched this movie before? And how have how did this movie land on you and her performance in particular? Yeah, so I had seen this film uh, for the first time, I don't know, maybe 15 years ago, 17 years ago, something like that. And it was simply just like a, a, a like I did it because I sought it out because it was like a box check thing of, yes, this is supposed to right. be one of the best performances ever. I got to see this. You know, it's it, like you said, it's not an easy movie to just make time for. Um, it's not that it's that the fact that it's like really long or anything. It's just a no. very emotionally draining film. And I knew that would be that going into it. Um, and, uh, so I'd seen it then, and this is the second time I watched it for this, this, uh, the podcast, the first time I saw it, I mean, again, the performance even doesn't live up to the hype in the sense of it's even better than you might think. <laughs> um, it really is, you know, I would also categorize this amongst like the five best film performances I've ever seen clearly. Um, and, uh, I, I really like, I don't want to say like enjoyed the movie. Cause that sounds like it's a fun movie, but I, I liked the movie a lot and appreciate it the Me first too. time. The second time I saw it, which was for this podcast, actually the film just really didn't work for me on every mm. level, except for her. I had a lot of issues with the story, um, yeah. and started sort of questioning, like, what is going, like, why is this, this story that they're telling? Um, but her performance actually became even 
not because of the the movie got degraded in quality in my eyes and her performance got lifted. It just I was like kind of forgot how good it actually. My memory of her being that good wasn't even as good as she actually ended up being in the film. Um, so it's just such an incredible performance. Um, mm-hmm. just un yeah, it's it's magic in that sense. Like you don't know how any an actress could do this. Um, or an actor right could do this, but she does. I mean, you really believe that she went through all these things and. It's yeah, the, the, the accent stuff, especially like I was paying close attention to that this time. I was like, wow, like she she learned all this stuff with this accent, too. Like how hard must that have been? And all the dialogue she does in Polish and German and German. And... It's like she has to do all of this. So it's like the technical part of it is is a feat in and of itself. But the artistry she can bring too is just incredible. So, yeah, incredible. I, I... <laughs> It's almost sort of I don't know I'm I'm left speechless often you know of, of this performance in particular yeah. I'm with you on the movie it is an odd movie um, in many ways and I I'll be curious if you watched it a third time ever how you feel because I remember feeling this way after I watched it the first two times I think I've seen it maybe three four times now over the last several years and. And I, I I remember feeling sort of confused about the story and the movie, but this time that I watched it, I sort of felt like maybe that is the point that this movie, like I was saying earlier, is a bit of an unreliable narrative from the point of view of Sophie, but also from the point of view of uh, Stingo's character. Because he's also writing a book and right, talking right. about this and talking about this interesting, amazing, weird relationship that totally changes his life mm-hmm. uh, happens with this this trio of people that they form. So maybe that is the point that this movie is meant to be kind of this elusive, haunting mm. sort of thing that you really can't wrap your head around. Um, so when I started to think about it from that point of view, it's it settled a lot better in my mind. Mm. Um, and it's sort of, obviously she's amazing, but those other two also really come through. Because um, Kevin yeah. Klein is like totally unhinged. Yeah, no, movie. it's it's great. And it's one of those performances because once you know the truth about this character, yeah, the choices that he makes retroactively make sense, but they also mm-hmm. made sense at the time. Mm-hmm. You're not like, oh, something's weird with this guy. You're like, oh, this mm-hmm. is just, I know people like this. He's just yeah. very kind of flighty and really full of life and all Erratic. this stuff. Yeah. And erratic, and that's fine. And then when you realize that he actually, oh, wait, no, he's like mentally disturbed. Yeah. It's like another layer to that performance. So he does a, you know, a fantastic job in, in the film as well. Totally. And so is Tingo, I think. Yeah. yeah. He has Peter to McNichol. play like yeah. this interesting, you know, he's sort of the bystander. He's the audience sur- surrogate, mm-hmm. but he's also a critical part of this trio, um, mm-hmm. which is such an interesting story device, right? Like, the movie is set with the backdrop of obviously the Holocaust and everything, but mm-hmm. in present time, it is really about this trio and, and it's actually even quite funny at times and quite mm-hmm. odd and weird of how they're getting to know each other and the, the adventures they go off on and such. So yeah, I, it's a loopy movie, I think. And, and maybe that's the point is, is my conclusion now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Again, like my issues with it this time were more about because it's based on a book. Um, yeah. So it's about the actual story itself and not really the the machinations of the film. Just it's an odd choice making uh, like a, a Holocaust movie, but not centering the victim on a Jewish person. She's not Jewish. And that's kind of the point of but the film. I and love then that, actually. the fact that her guilt as a survivor is this it just it doesn't feel i mean maybe i got too hung up on the representation of the holocaust and the survivors of that that tragedy it just seems like an odd story to tell using the holocaust to do that if it just comes down to the choice that she has to make and being so heartbroken and about guilt and all these things like that was not representative of what that experience was like um for the you know the the people going through it right they weren't they were victims they didn't yeah they guilt i don't think you know factors into it as much as it does for sophie's character so just very odd like story choices again going back to the book i'm not you know the film obviously was adapting what they had but i was starting to think like this is just weird like why did they have to make this about the holocaust then couldn't this just be something it's not even a jewish person it's nothing you know it's not like she made it uh just like that decision of 
choosing between her children was something that, uh, you know, was part of that experience for everyone who went through that, that tragedy, just those sort of things I thought were just kind of odd. I don't know why they just landed on me kind of odd, uh, but mm. you know, again, that's the book that has nothing to do with Meryl or Kevin Klein's mm-hmm. performance or Peter Medical. I think they all are, are still totally brilliant, but I think it's kind of a weird story, but uh, to me, that is the point actually. Um, and I think that's why the movie has enduring power. Cause you can make movies about obviously, the people who are actual victims and there are mm-hmm. i think there's something interesting about doing it this way and it, it kind of contextualizes it and this is why sophie is not a hero of this movie no 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 at yeah. all right she's, uh, yeah right she's actually not and i think that's the thing that you're the suffering of other people and what really went on is heightened because of you're seeing it from her point of view who is a pretty selfish person, you know, even though she herself endures a lot and goes through a lot of trouble Mm -hmm. for Mm -hmm. sure. Um, And that's sort of the point, I think. So I kind of like that aspect. No, interesting. It's a, it's a different way of telling the story. Um, So I think to me, the, the confusion that I was referring to is sort of more of the plot points because there's just a lot of layers and layers of like Mm -hmm. what happened when, and I think, my response to that was that it's that's also the point because it's sort of this unreliable narrative thing happening from multiple characters point of views Mm -hmm. um so kind of yeah now that i'm saying this out loud and this conversation makes me feel land even more positive on this movie. oh interesting okay (laughs) yeah yeah interesting yeah yeah i sort of felt that her performance is so historic and amazing yeah if, if that were removed or if there was some other actor in in the film I find I I just don't imagine the film would have any oh, yeah. kind of stain power or it resonance wouldn't. at all. Um, it really just comes down to that transformative performance that again, like you watch it and you kind of forget how good it is, and it's just yeah. incredible. Um, definitely like in the top several performances put on screen for sure. Yeah. Hey there, it's Alex. If you like the review and discussion Kron and I just had, make sure you subscribe to our channel, Movies That Shaped Us, to get full episodes. Every other Wednesday, Karan and I cover a topic around important people, places, events, and moments in our lives, and then explore it through three of our favorite movies. Subscribe right now or follow our podcast on Spotify or Apple Podcasts via the link in the description below. Hope you join us for the journey.